So I want to start by explaining that I bought a boat back in November. You may have seen a couple of my other videos where I'm doing maintenance and also uh, build ideas for like chum tubes and things like that. I'm working on a couple other ones, but I wanted to, to go over some of the mechanical challenges that I've had. I spent a lot of time looking for folks that had tank pressure testing videos because I believe that I may have a leak somewhere because I keep getting water in my my gas lines. Um, I initially drained everything out of the tank and thought that I got everything out, but because I can't remove my sender, I can't stick a tube all the way into the absolute corner of the boat. And so realizing after using it a couple times after and still picking up water, that it may be that the, the tube never goes all the way down to the bottom of the gas tank, which would leave water. And as it sloshes around as the boat's being used, then it would continue to pick up the water it's difficult at the very least to take out a fuel separator while you're out on the water, pour that water into a gas safe container. I found a Gator, I had Gatorade bottles on the boat because we were drinking Gatorades as we were doing, going through all the mechanical stuff while we were doing our sea trials on the boat. And that was what I had used, but I discovered that it was very difficult to take the water separator off while you're moving around on the water and then pour that into an opening about that big. I didn't plan ahead and bring a funnel, which I should have. And, and then having to pour the gas back and keep the water in there, that way I could reprime the fuel separator without getting gas all over the boat, without having the gas go into the water and, and contaminate the water. So I really got frustrated. And so I wanna end my question of whether or not I have a tank leak or if it's just residual water from the previous owner, or maybe if it was before I bought it that maybe some kids put water in there, or it could be um, the fill O-ring, or I've even been suggested to check the vent on the side of the boat, because as it comes into the hull, it makes a 90 degree turn. And one of the guys in the boaters group told me to turn that elbow up so that the water coming in the, the vent can't go down and into the tank because especially in rough water when you're when you're hitting waves and things like that 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 water could splash in past the vent so i wanted to, to go over a couple things that i decided to buy because i couldn't find anybody local at the mechanics that would do boat testing and even to get it into them to look at it is now six weeks which means i'll be into red snapper season and not being able to fish because I have a boat that doesn't want to run right, thanks to the water problem. I also reached out to some fuel tank companies. There's an aluminum company here in town. They're also backed up several weeks and they're, they said their focus is primarily on new builds because the boat market is booming and they're doing a lot of builds for uh, boats and airboats and things like that. So I am just gonna go ahead and take care of this myself. So the first step that I did was I ordered a new water separator and I'm going to show you what I bought and why I bought it. This kit comes with plugs and it comes with your instructions for the unit and the actual unit in the box. Uh, this is a Raycor fuel water separator. And as you can see on the bottom, it has a clear sight glass along with the ability to vent that water out and close it while you're out on it, on the water and not have to worry about having gas going everywhere and water going everywhere, you're only draining out the water because you can tilt this over to the corner and water sits on the bottom uh, of the gas and will always go straight to the bottom almost immediately. Even if you shook it up, it will bubble up and then that water will quickly settle because it is heavier than the gas. So you can vent that off. So I'm going to put this on my water separator. I don't know that I'm gonna change the plate or not, but uh, at this point, my goal, because this is a 90 gallon per hour separator, I have a Yamaha F225, and the rated separator that's on my boat now is a 90 gallon per hour unit. So I'm going to use the same setup. Make sure if you're replacing yours with a non-standard one that the part numbers match up, obviously do your homework on your gallons per hour because you don't wanna be restricting your engine from being able to get the proper fuel flow, otherwise you'll be stuck out in the water. So that is the kit. It comes with two plugs. The, if I end up replacing this top, I'll move the barbs over from mine. One is uh, from the fuel side and then the, uh, from the tank and then the output side on the other side. 
would end up going to my motor, but because I have a Yamaha with the fuel management system, I will have to add the, the metering uh, wheel set up on here, and I don't know that I really want to take all that apart yet. So I'm going to go with just trying just the filter first. I do know they sell the filter separate, and they also sell the cap separate, and by the time I found a vendor that would sell me the filter and the cap setup and do the shipping, uh, just for standard ground shipping, it was about the same money as buying the whole thing on Amazon. I paid $135, I believe is what I paid for it. And I had it in two days because I'm in Florida and the vendor that shipped it is in South Florida and I had it in one day processing and one day ship and I had my part. So that's gonna take care of my water issue. As far as the tank, I had a lot of doubts with the tank having water in it. In it. And so my guesses are, could it be a cracked neck? Could it be a problem with the vent? Could it be a problem with one of the seams? Um, I tried to get a hold of a couple different mechanics and, and nobody really has the time to, uh, to do it. Everybody's backed up. It's a minimum six weeks at the better mechanics places here. And I'm not just gonna take it to some guy and, and still be guessing afterwards. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and I bought a magic box of parts that I'm going to show you that will take care of my problem. On a fuel tank, you typically have three hoses on it. You have one for your gas fill, which is typically inch and a half uh, on most boats. You have a vent uh, that allows the uh, air to escape out of the tank when you are filling it, as well as also when you're running it. That fill neck comes down uh, usually an inch or two into the tank, so that there's a, a gap up at the top of the tank so that it has room for the fuel to expand as it heats and cools. That vent also gives that the air a chance to get out as that fuel moves around inside the tank as well as heats and cools and expands. And then the third neck that you have on there is your fuel line going up to the motor. My plan is to block off first the fuel line. So I bought this safety seal plug and it is a air expanding bladder, if you will, that you uh, fill with either water. You can fill it with water because this uh, Schrader valve is on threads. You can use this. It's mainly used for testing plumbing, but I'm gonna use it for testing my boat. So with it already having the Schrader valve in there, I'm just gonna drop that inside the fill tube, put a, about 15 or 20 pounds of pressure on there. It says it's rated for 45 pounds. I'm not gonna need 45 pounds because my tank has a uh, sticker on it that has the specs on it. Make sure that you read that because it, most of them now, from I think the early 2000s on, have the placard that says who made it, the model number, who it was made for. It'll have your certification ratings on it. And the most important piece, if you're doing something like this, it will have a max pressure. And usually you don't wanna test more than three pounds from what I've seen in my research, as well as my placard says right on it, no more than three pounds of pressure. So that's gonna go down inside the fill neck for the gas tank, and that is going to block off that airway. My second airway will get blocked off by a line clamp set. This will be going on the vent, which is a larger line. Um, I found these, I believe these are only about $16 on Amazon. I'll put the links in the description below later, but these are just simple clamps that you uh, crimp and then slide your handle back. They have little locks on them so that they, it doesn't pop off. And you crimp the line so that no gas can get by. Make sure when you do your crimping that you don't stress the hose so bad that it cracks. If you have an aged set of hoses on there, your hoses may crack and I'm taking a risk where I may have to replace that hose, but I'll replace a $5 hose if I can prove that the tank is good. I'm okay with that. So that's part number two. And then part number three is actually two pieces. And I'm gonna open this up for you so you can see it. But this is what I plan on using to fill on the inlet side of the, the uh, engine. So I'm gonna take from my water separator to the tank, I'm gonna remove that hose and I'm going to install this piece on there. It's basically, it's a test valve with a low pressure gauge. It has up to 15 pounds. Again, we're only going to three, so I wanted small increments. They sell it with higher increments. I believe I only paid about $25. Again, descriptions will be below. But this has standard three quarter NPT or national pipe thread on here and has a Schrader valve so you can pressurize your tank up. Now, I found several adapters, but I found a kit that had, I believe six or eight plugs in it. 
It has three quarter MPT as well as a three eighths barb. Three eighths is the size of my fuel line. So I will thread tape that and that will become my test pressure side. Uh, I will put my uh, air compressor on here. I have the style that you clip clamp on and then it has a squeeze dial. So I can actually put air in it. You put a few blasts in a time, then check your pressure. Put a few blasts, in, few blasts in a time and check your pressure because you do not want to over pressurize your tank. If you do, you run the risk of cracking necks, cracking corners. Um, the other thing is don't forget you're dealing with gasoline. So do yourself a favor. Make sure you look for gas leaks before you start. Once you start applying pressure, make sure you smell around and make sure you're not smelling any gasoline. You don't want to have any kind of gas fire. And then once I pressurize the tank to that three pounds, what I'll do is I'll take a bottle of soapy water, put some Dawn in a, in a bottle with some water, mix it up. And then you start spraying all your connectors, especially the, where the necks meet the tank. Um, those seem to be a flexing point where if the tank is fixed and, and the hoses are slapping around from the boat moving, that could put some stress on those necks. And then of course you would end up with some cracks. Um, sealing it is another thing that I will deal with if I get to that point. Uh, but as of right now, I am, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure that I have a tank leak, but I want to be a hundred percent sure that I don't. Uh, my boat has a one piece deck, which means I don't have a hatch that I can just remove screws and go in and have the glory of looking at the tank every inch from top to bottom. My tank also has um, a fixed sending unit. So most of your sending units, you have like five or six screws on the top ring and a gasket underneath and it gets screwed down and seals the tank that way. Now most guys can just remove that and then stick like a copper hose down in there and use a pump and pump out all the water so you know you've already got all the water out. Unfortunately, mine is on there. There's no screws on it. I'm not sure exactly how they bonded it to the tank but they used a very, very hard putty. Um, I plan on pressure testing and I'm going to spray that very, very well to make sure that I don't have any problems there. Now, I could have broken off the, the bonding material and taken the sending unit out, but then I would have had the challenge of uh, putting the sending unit back in, marking the holes and then drilling holes and making sure that I don't get any aluminum burrs down inside my tank. Plus, drilling around metal is not a fun thing when you're working with gasoline. That was yet another risk that I was not willing to take. I have about 50 gallons of fuel in my boat now. I had actually previously only had about 20 to 25 gallons and I uh, used a secondary pump and pulled all the fuel out of it. I actually had a smaller version of this same water separator, very small, because I wasn't doing heavy uh, fuel flow. I passed everything through there. So I know all the fuel that I put into portable gas tanks from friends that I borrowed, that I was putting good gas into the tank that did not have any contaminants or water in it. And so I was able to drain all that out and then put it all back. Now, the thing that I didn't realize until after it was said and done was I drained all that fuel out and the, the tube that goes down inside the tank, let's say your tank is 12 inches tall, that tube may only be 10 and a half, 11 inches uh, long to where it drops down just before the bottom of the tank so it's not sucking all the trash off the bottom. The thing that I didn't think about up until after I took it out for its second sea trial was now when I put all that good gas back in it and I filled another, uh, what did I put, about another 60 gallons in it. It's a 115 gallon tank. So now I've got, you know, well over halfway full gas tank full of fuel. And as I go out and I start testing it, it's now sloshing all that water around. So that pickup tube is going to draw all the water back out that I did not get off the bottom of the tank. So I'm going to go after pressure testing first to prove that uh, I have no leaks. And then I will be uh, adding this secondary water separator to guarantee my ability to remove any water that I find out in the lake. Now, the last time I took it out, I had run it for about 15, 20 minutes and then started to see the problems of it picking up water. So we took it out, took out, took out the separator and sure enough, we found water in it. When we ran it the second time, we ran a longer period before we started running into problems. So in my mind, I'm thinking we're getting close to the end of this water in a tank issue. So we separated the, the fuel and water out of the separator again, put the fuel back in to reprime it, pumped it back up, got it started. And then I was able to drive it for almost four and a half hours straight. We put about 55, 56 miles on the boat, just cruising around at like 20, 25 miles an hour. So I felt really good about no overheat issues and I was able to run long distances 
And so after running it that long, just before taking it in, we decided to stop and do some hole shots with it to make sure that everything's working properly. And wouldn't you know, when I tried to take off with the boat, it wouldn't come out of the hole. It would start to go and then it would start to sputter. And so I idled it back in. Uh, my guess is when I take it back apart, I'm gonna find more gas in the water, uh, wa more water in the water separator. And I'll be dealing with that with this new water separator unit. So stay tuned and I will show you exactly how I get this done. And I will uh, hope, I really hope that this becomes something that's valuable to somebody because I did a lot of research and there's not a lot of pressure testing setups that you can uh, see on YouTube to figure out exactly what you have to do. So, you know, ordering this kit was something that uh, I pondered over about two weeks and then decided to pull the trigger because I'm not waiting six weeks for a mechanic. So uh, stay tuned and you'll uh, see a little bit more.